my family always asked me, said, do they have Chinese restaurants over there? Oh. I said, yeah, but they just called them restaurants. Okay, my name is Antonio Graceffo. My name is Antonio Graceffo. I'm the author of the book, The Monk from Brooklyn, and also the host of the web TV show, Martial Arts Odyssey. In today's presentation, I'd like to talk to you about some cultural and linguistic features of the Chinese language, which may make it difficult for speakers of Chinese to learn English. And if you yourself are an English speaker and you're learning Chinese, this video may also be helpful to you because it will give you some ideas of areas where the Chinese language is different from the English language. Now the first rule of language learning is that speaking a foreign language is more than speaking your own language with foreign words. That's what most of us try and do. We take foreign words, we plug them into our own ideas, our own cultural linguistic context, and it makes absolutely no sense. This dictionary has become infamous. It is the classic example of how not to translate. It's called English as she is spoke. And this really was a 19th century Portuguese English conversational phrase book for people learning the English language. Now, when I was a little boy, whenever I had an exam in school, my grandma would say to me, Now, the boca de lupo, which literally means into the wolf's mouth. Now, for a little kid, that's pretty scary, right? But... In the Italian language, this is the same as someone saying, break a leg. It means, you know, good luck. And so when grandma would say, nella bocca del lupo, I'm supposed to say, crepe il lupo. The wolf should die. But both of these, English as she has spoke and nella bocca del lupo, are both examples of things that made sense in the foreign language, but when they were translated into English, they made no sense at all. What the speaker is saying is not necessarily what the listener understands. Hey, baby, what's happening? Did you catch that show last night on TV? What's the name of that rock group? It's right on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, those cats were really smoking. Now, some of this is cultural and some of it is linguistic. Let's analyze just a couple of linguistic features of the Chinese language that make it difficult. First of all, a Chinese friend might ask you, how did you play on your holiday? Play. They use the word play exactly the same as we use for children's toys. And this is the image that most Westerners will have if you ask them, how did you play? Play. Played with toys? I don't know. I played Monopoly? But in Chinese, play means to recreate, to have fun, to go out, to go out to a bar, go drinking, or to go with dancing girls. You expect certain things to be different when you're learning a foreign language. Uh, different ways of expressing ideas, uh, diff different ways of saying things. But, but in Chinese, even something as simple as yes and no is different, and it's dramatically different. If you look at a dictionary, it'll say sure is yes, and sure is yes. Except when yes is dui, hui, kui, zai, dangran, neng, or 50 other words. Guanxi. Now, guanxi is a word that everybody coming to China, they, they already know this word, guanxi. It's actually uh, worked its way into the English dictionary. I've seen it in newspapers and things. And if you look it up in the dictionary, it's translated simply as connections or relationships. But the complexity of guanxi is far beyond the simple definition, to the point that there are whole books and, of course, thesis and essays and articles and things written guanxi. So just using a dictionary and translating can often be be completely useless or even dangerous. Something else about Chinese. Chinese has no concept of spelling. My name is Dong Ni. Oh, can you spell that? When our students are learning English, they also have no concept of spelling. That's something to keep in mind when you're teaching. In China, or in Chinese-speaking countries, children are taught to read by recognizing and memorizing the shapes of words. And Many of them never learn to sound out words. Speakers of Western languages, when we encounter new words, we can pronounce them because we know the phonetic rules and we know how to pronounce things phonetically. Chinese speakers don't automatically know that, and some of them, as I said, will never learn it. Okay, this is uh, an example that I got on one of my papers on the subject was cheating in school. Cheating in school is, and school is is one word, badly for the social of the student student misspelled learning learning much better students should all right first of all 
students much better, students should, whatever. It's all like one long word strung together, which I'm sure on Microsoft Word would have had a red line under it or a green line to warn them, but they don't know. If you don't have spelling, you also don't have spell check. So they don't know about Microsoft Word. So if you're assigning your students to write uh, papers using Microsoft Word, just remember that they don't know how to use that. And you have to teach them. Encountering new words. Chinese native speaker children spend four hours per day for about 12 years of their lives memorizing characters. It takes 12 years for a native speaker to learn how to read and write. Most native speakers that I've interviewed told me that they estimated that on the day they graduated college, they knew about 4,000 or 4,500 characters, and then they will spend the rest of their lives losing characters. But one of the important points is that this Chinese education system has set a precedent for them, telling them that the way you learn language is by memorizing words. And when you look at Chinese exams, like the standard exam in Korea, the st or some, some of the standard exams uh, in Japan, and, 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 and probably in China and Taiwan as well, uh, th they rate the exam by the number of words, and that's all it is. One word, one definition. One word, one definition. And then they try and bring this attitude to English. And of course, you could know all the words and never, never be able to speak English. There's a lot of intuition that goes on in communication. Um, I hesitate to say that Westerners are better at intuition than speakers of Asian languages. It may just be that they're picking up on different linguistic clues than we are, or let's say cultural linguistic clues. But this is an example. I was in the staff room. I was teaching in Korea. I was in the staff room. A Chinese, uh, excuse me, a Korean teacher walks up to me, shoves a book in my face, and it has this picture of of a map, United Kingdom, France, whatever, red line, and she just says, apropos of nothing, what mean channel? What mean channel? Ah yes, what mean channel? The the question that has plagued man for eons. Now, I didn't know what the channel was. I had no idea what a channel. I'd never even heard this word before, but okay, I glanced at it. What's the first thing I noticed? It's written with a capital C, which means it's the name of something. She hadn't even gotten that far. She said to me, oh, I looked it up in many dictionaries, but I can't find it. And I go, well, you know, it, it's a name. It's written with a capital letter. We know it's a name. And then I look at the map, and I go, well, that's the British Channel. And then it hit me. I go, oh, yeah, there's that, that tunnel that they were building you know, back back in the 90s or whatever, that, that they were building this tunnel from from England to France that would go under the British Channel. And I, oh, the Channel Tunnel, the Channel. I go, oh, it means the tunnel that runs under the British Channel. And so she just stared at me, like 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 I changed the subject. You know, like I, like like I was refusing to answer her. And she's like, what means Channel? And I go, it's the tunnel that runs under the water between. Britain and France and once again she's still staring at me blankly and it's occurring to me that she doesn't know maybe she doesn't know that Britain and France are whatever 20 kilometers apart you know and separated by a very small body of water called the channel now I know Americans are often criticized for not being global and not knowing about other countries and this and that but my experience in Asia has been that, that neither the students nor the teachers have a very good world map in their head or, or a very good idea of where, where various countries are. And it's not just about Europe. They, they, they generally don't know anything about Asia with the exception of Japan and China, the two largest, you know, most, most important sort of countries for, for, for most of them. And, um, you know, if you were to start asking them about Vietnam, Thailand, Cambodia, Burma, whatever, they, they would have no clue. So it's not just about not knowing about Europe. Um, they, and the other thing is that I don't think they're taught map reading at school because my experience has been that even teachers didn't know how to use maps very well.